Right, this video is going to look at solving these four problems. <clears throat> um, also looking at how we can word some of these slightly differently. <clears throat> okay, so let's start with the first question. We want to first be able to find our a value. Okay, now when we times the 2x by the ax squared, it has to give us this here. So clearly a must be 2. Okay, similarly, when I times my constant terms together, right, minus 1 times c, that has to equal 4. So I hope you agree with me that that means c must be, can't just be 4 because minus 1 times 4 would give me minus 4, so that means it has to be minus <clears throat> 4 like so. Now what I'm going to do is actually just pop these to the side because once you have established your values for a and c what you now need to do is go back over here and say right let's rewrite and put that <clears throat> put that information in so instead of ax squared it's now going to be 2x squared um, i don't know my middle term still so that still remains as bx but my c value is minus 4. <clears throat> now it's time to find um, the b so what we're going to do is we look now at the next piece of information and that is our x squared so we're going to take our x squared and we're going to say on the left hand side the coefficient is 8. now on the right hand side how do i expand this and get right an x squared well there's only a couple of ways that we can get an x squared Okay, if I try and say 2x times x squared, that's no good because that will give me 4x cubed. And I don't want a cubed, I want a squared. Very particular. You can see here, if I times 2x by 2 by bx, I get 2bx squared. So that means, oops, wanted to just write that down a little bit lower. So we're just going to look at the coefficient, so that means that has to be 2b. Now if I do 2x times minus 4, that would be minus 8x. And again, that's no good because I want an x squared. So now we consider here the minus 1 times 2x squared, and we get minus 2x squared, so the coefficient is minus 2. And if you can keep timing timesing 1 by the bx, right, that's not an x squared, so no good. This is now a simple linear equation to solve for b. So pop the 2 on the other side, it becomes plus 2 equals 2b, and therefore b has to be 5. Okay, to get rid of the times 2, we're going to divide by 2. So now what we have is we have our polynomial, right? This original thing here, this is now going to equal 2x take one right? that's the bit they gave us over here um, and now the quadratic will be 2x squared take 4x plus 5 and we're done let's try the next one <clears throat> okay so now given that 3x take 2 as a factor so notice it's not written the same like this one just said it, it wrote it in this form 2x take 1 it's the same thing as saying 2x take 1 is a factor. So that means I can write all of this as it's going to be that equals 3x take 2. And once again, it's going to be multiplied by some quadratic, which I don't know what it is. Let's just pause for a minute and, and look at the way that this is now similar to the first question we did. It's just written differently. I could have actually said, right, instead of writing this, I could have said 2 thirds is a 0, or 2 thirds is a root, or 2 thirds is a solution. Right? It's the same thing. Back here, instead of giving this whole equation here, I could have just said 1 half is a root, a solution, a zero, cut the x-axis at a half, or I could have said 
2x take 1 is a factor. So you need to recognize all the different ways that we can pose the question, but we're basically asking the same thing. All right, so here we go. Let's find our a value clearly. When I times these together, 3x times ax squared, 3 times a has to give me 6. So therefore, a must be 2. Then we've got minus 2 times c, and that has to give me minus 24. So 2 12s are 24. Okay, what do I want it to be? I've got a negative times this and I want it to be a positive, so that has to be a minus. Remember what we said from last time, once you've done that, let's write this. So that's going to be 3x take 2, what's the information we have? 2x squared, we still don't know the middle term, take 12. Now we're going to try and find um, b. So to find b, I want to consider the next piece of information here. So we're going to consider x squared, and the coefficient on the left-hand side is 11. And I've written it too high again because I want to show my little loops there. Okay, is 11. So how do I get an x squared? Well, it has to be x times x. So that gives me 3 bx, right? 3x times bx is 3bx, so we've got 3b. And then minus 2 times x squared, that gives me minus 4x squared, so then we take 4. Hopefully you can see that's the only two situations where I can get an x squared, because if I loop anything else, so minus 2 times minus 12, that gives me 24. Right, if I do minus 2 times bx, that gives me minus 2bx, and I didn't want x, I wanted x squared. So I've covered all the possibilities. So now let's just solve. Get rid of the take 4. We add 4. Get rid of the times 3. Right, we're going to divide by 3, so 3 fives give me 15. So now we've got b equals 5. So we found the A, the B, the C, we're done. <clears throat> it hasn't said do anything else, all over Red Rover. Next question. Okay, all along the same lines, but now we've got this. And we can't really do anything. It doesn't tell us something is a zero. It doesn't tell us um, something is a factor. But that's okay. We have more ammo up our sleeve. So we've got our graphics calculator. We're going to go into equation, we're going to go into polynomial, so F2 and degree 3. And what was the situation? So 1, 6, minus 17, 92. We've got a 1, enter, 6, enter, minus 17 and minus 92. Alright, so we do that, we press enter or press solve. Now, <clears throat> those are useless, those roots there, right? Decimals, decimals, but... What this is saying is that 4, 4 is a solution, okay? So using technology, so from tech, we have 4 is a solution, right? That gives me that x take 4 must be a factor, okay? So now we can rewrite this. We can say that this must equal x take 4. And like we did before, it would have to times another quadratic or a quadratic to end up getting our cubic. So let's work this out. So we've got x minus 4. x times what gives me x cubed? Well, then it's just x squared. So in other words, a will equal 1. Okay, minus 4 times c has to give me minus 92. Okay, so negative times a positive will give me 92. Okay, and so that is 23. We still don't know the middle term. 
So now it comes time for equating coefficients right, to get the middle term like we did before. Okay, let's see. So remember, we've used this one. We've used the 92. So now let's use the x squared. So if I'm using x squared, <clears throat> okay, it means 6 has to equal. Now how do I get an x squared? It's going to be x times bx, so that's going to be b, and then minus 4 times x squared, so minus 4. So therefore, b has to equal 10. So let's just add that to our list over here. We've got b is 10. We had c was or is 23. Okay, so therefore, we have our function, let's call it y. We know that this is now going to be x take 4, x squared, your b value is 10 plus, oops, 10x plus 23. But we haven't finished because the question is asking us, find all exact solutions. So from here, this gives us the exact solution of 4. How do we get an exact solution of a quadratic? Now, I'm looking at this, I can't factorize it. So I'd have to use the quad formula. But if it didn't say, use algebra, 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 look at our technology. I'm now going to go, all right, we're still in polynomial, but now instead of degree three, I'm going degree two. It was one, enter, and look at that, I've forgotten what it was. I knew there was 23 somewhere, one, 10, 23. Pop the 10, pop the 23, enter, enter, and here we have our two solutions. Minus 5 plus root 2, minus 5, take root 2. And we're done. So our two solutions are x equals, or three solutions are x equals 4 and x equals, I know, I forgot, minus 5 <coughs> plus or minus root 2. Minus 5 plus or minus root 2. Okay, so it's just building upon, right, we had those skills to find the ABC and now we have to take it one more step to find all the exact solutions and we're making sure we use technology. So let's go with our next one. Find all the exact solutions of this. So once again, it's not telling us what's a zero, what's a factor. We have to find that ourselves by using technology. So we're going to polynomial degree three, Uh, we've got 2 minus 13, 2 and 2. So 2 minus 13, 2 and 2. All right, solve. There needs to be one decent one. Mm, we've got decimal. Aha, one half. So that's telling me. Okay, so again, using tech. Let's go pink. Using tech, we have x equals one half is a solution. In other words, that means 2x take 1 is a factor. Okay, if you couldn't go straight there, you can go, oh, x take a half, because if we've got a half as a zero, x take a half, and then just times up by 2. Bang. So here we go. This is going to be 2x take 1. Okay, 2x times something. I'm sick and tired of writing ax squared plus bx plus c. I'm just going to go straight to it. 2x times what gives me 2x cubed? Well, it has to be just an x squared. Okay, and then minus 1 times what will give me positive 2. So that's going to be minus 2. In the middle, we don't know. We pop the bx. All right, your job is to try and find the B. So here we go. We will take, all right, we've used this one. We've used this one. So now we're going to use the coefficient of X squared. So the coefficient of X squared is minus 13. And by the way, you could by all means use the coefficient of X. I'm just using the next one over. You get the same answer. Anyway, here we go. X squared. We've done this a few times now. The only way we can get X squared is to say 2X times BX. So that's 2B. Well, not to be, as Shakespeare would say, and minus 1 times x squared is the coefficient is minus 1. Let's get rid of our take 1. We add 1. 
minus 12 equals 2b. Therefore, b, get rid of the times 2, divide 2, it's minus 6. So back to our situation here. This means it's 2x. Take 1, x squared, take 6x. Take 2, and here we go. We're now going to find the 0 of this one, right? We already know the 0 for this is x is a half. And how do we get the zeros of this quadratic? We can't factorize it. If we could have factorized, I'd do that. I wouldn't even bother going to my collator, 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 but I can see there's no way I could factorize that, right? Factors of 2 won't give me. Give me, give me. So here we go 1 minus 6 minus 2. So exit, go into degree 2, 1 minus 6 minus 2. So 3 plus or minus root 11. So there's the minus, okay? 3 plus or minus root 11. And there you have it. Hopefully that helps you understand and you can answer a whole range of these types of questions.